Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna walk through the whole process of solving a real world problem with 3D printing. So this video is a little bit different for me. This is not a project video. This is to answer some questions I've had about 3D printing. Since I've been doing 3D printing lately, people have been asking about the design process. So what we're gonna do is take a real world problem here in my shop, we're gonna design something in the software and print it out and fix that problem. And also I'm gonna use two free pieces of software to do this, but this is not a software tutorial. There's a lot of great resources out there already for you to learn the software. I just wanna show you the steps that you have to take to get from idea to product. All right, so let's look at the problem. If I'm setting up my CNC machine for a job and it's not turned on, there's no good way for me to raise and lower the spindle manually. I have to turn this little nut up here and it's not very comfortable. So I'm going to show you how to make a really simple knob that will fit right over this hex nut to make it really easy to turn. So the first step is to measure the real world thing that we're going to be working around. And to do that I'm going to use some digital calipers. These are about five dollars. They're very inexpensive, but they're just accurate enough to be able to make models. So let's measure this. I wrote down those measurements and went to 1-2-3-D design. I went to a top view and made a polygon. Gave it six sides and set the radius to half of the measurement of the nut. I made a bigger circle around it, and the size of that doesn't really matter, and then I used the extrude tool to make that into a 3D shape. Once I had that cylinder, I extruded the hexagon in the same way, but since it was inside the cylinder, it actually removed that area. So right there I could stop and I have a functional knob, but to make it a little bit more comfortable, I used the fillet tool to pull in the corners to round off the edges. Now I could also stop right there, but I wanted to give it some texture to make it easier to turn. I created a cylinder and moved it to the outside face. I adjusted it so it just barely stuck out from the face, and then I used the pattern tool to copy that shape around the outside face of the knob as many times as I want, and it will evenly distribute them. So right there I have a functional knob. I export all this stuff as an STL file and then drop that right into Cura. It's my slicing software. The only thing I did here was flip it over so that it would print correctly. In this case, it's just easier to have the opening facing up. Then I saved this model out to an SD card and stuck it in the 3D printer. Now this particular piece took about 20 minutes to print and you can adjust that based on a lot of different variables, but there it was, a functional knob. I didn't do any finishing on this and that would make it even smoother. But it pushed right down over the nut and it worked perfectly. So I just wanted to make an overview to show you the entire process from idea all the way to 3D printed object. Now it's pretty simple, but of course you can complicate every single step of it as much as you would like. So let's talk about software. I used Cura and 123D Design. They're both free, they're both very easy to use, but you have a lot of different options. I'll link those down in the description, but if you have some that you've used that you'd like to suggest, leave those in the comments for other people. Now if you're interested in the stuff but you don't have access to a printer, I would still download the software. It's free, so you have no reason not to play with it and get to know it and get to learn it. Now if you don't have a printer, you don't know anybody with a printer, there are some services that will get things printed for you. One of those is called 3D Hubs. Now they're not a sponsor of this video, but they did give me a code that I can give to you to get you $10 off your first print. So if you click the link down in the description and when you go to check out, you use the code MAKESTUFF, you'll get $10 off. So go check them out. Now as far as the knob that I made in this video, if you would like one for yourself, you can do a couple of things. One, I'll put the file on Thingiverse, which you can download, you can print your own, you can modify it, do whatever you want to with it. Or if you'd like to buy one from me, I'm going to put a few in different colors on my site for a limited time and you can buy one from there. While you're there, if you'd like to buy a t-shirt, stickers, or whatever, that would help keep I Like To Make Stuff going. I hope you liked this video and I hope you found it useful and if you did, please let me know in the comments below or at iliketomakestuff.com. I love it when you guys post what you're working on on my Facebook page or on Instagram or on Twitter, so please continue to do that because it's always really awesome to see. I've got a lot of other projects and playlists of things that you might be interested in. There's metalworking, woodworking, 3D printing, CNC, all sorts of stuff, so go check those out. If you want to support the videos that I do, Patreon is the best way to do that. Patreon supporters get to see all my videos early, they get exclusive behind the scenes stuff and Google Hangouts, things like that. So go check that out. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.